Welcome back to the next installment of this pick and place machine trying to build a text hat that goes for Raspberry Pi. It's for that museum in Albuquerque like their B-52. I'm going down next week so I'm really anxious to get this going and uh, Sunday was like uh, three days ago, four days ago, I got up, I got my solder paste out, started warming it up and I did some a uh, little bit more development. I ended up working on the, the uh, z-axis placement which moves the solder paste dispenser tip um, down to, to dispense the solder naturally and then the uh, pickup head down to place the parts. I started uh, doing some test runs back and forth and actually getting everything running to make a final check and um, after a while I was uh, wildly out of place. Uh, the, neither the solder or the camera, it, it was just losing, well, basically it was losing steps. So I went and ran Linux CNC has a uh, latency test procedure, <coughs> excuse me, and um, uh, I was that PC that I chose was wildly out of spec. Um, there's a limit of uh, 50 microseconds that you can be for the latency. Linux CNC runs a Linux extension called a real-time application interface, and uh, that modifies the kernel, the scheduler, and the kernel so that you can have preemptive scheduling. That's how they end up um, structuring the actual pulses going out to the controller to step the motors. And if your latency is too high, you're just going to miss steps. So that PC was out. <laughs> Took it out of here, went in the garage and found another one. And it was an old e-machines. And I was thinking, well, this is kind of a piece of junk that I've had around too long. I went ahead and ran the latency test on that. And it was running actually pretty well. When I took it apart to swap the hard drives out, uh, it turns out I uh, swapped the motherboard in this as well. So this one here is where it's like a uh, Celeron running at you know, 2.3 gigahertz or something like that, two, uh, two core. So this one's running fine. It has a latency of 30 microseconds, which is okay for Linux CNC. Um, and um, so I got that going and then I started placing around some other stuff and I figured out another problem I had with my particular setup. And these are problems that you're, you're going to have as well if you're actually trying to build one of these things. Uh, I'm going to move this thing. I'm going to move the platform back over and I'll talk a little bit in this other um, camera here. So this platform here is a piece of um, um, acrylic that I had uh, laser cut. And I'm mounting it on these two extrusions. And this um, extrusion here is not really critically aligned to this one. This is the... Uh, the X rail. It turns out that the way that this shape Oko was machined, these two pieces are, are kind of aligned by the, the movement of the platform, but these two are not aligned at all to these. And so what ends up happening is last time we talked about a problem I had and I was using Linux CNC, the rotational aspect, because there was a there's a you know rotation around the Z of, of an angle. It turns out that this platform, the way it's structured, is I, I not, not only have this problem, but I also have this, the board is rotated this way, and it's rotated this way. So I have a three-axis three, um, three axis transformation issue going on here. I can solve some of these by shimming this bracket, and kind of I can tilt it back and forth, the bracket like this, and I can also kind of move the board up and down. So I got it close enough. If, if I was doing this again, which I probably will be doing if I, you know, because this, this thing's going to work. Uh, I've got three options at this point to solve this problem. One is I can try to align my base platform to the, to the actual movement platform. That's option one. There's a lot of touch-offs involved and I can actually use a, like a probe, so to speak, to actually, to do that. And that's option number one. Option number two is to scrap this whole thing and I should have started from scratch and had this particular aspect which is the alignment of the board platform to the um, the uh, the head platform actually had that machined that's option two that's pretty expensive at this point uh, I'll look into doing that in the future option number three which is also attractive is <clears throat> Python uh, NumPy has a um, some 3D transformations to solve this very problem. There's a lot of things like um, the way you do flight control systems for gimbling um, <clears throat> that I could actually uh, uh, 
th this board, the way it's oriented now, has an, an X, Y, and Z transformation. It also has a pitch, yaw, and roll transformation. So it's possible that I could put all those things into um, a NumPy routine. And when I want to go to a specific X, Y location in one coordinate system, it gets translated into the other coordinate system. Uh, I did this exact kind of work for a sun tracking system at a startup that I left about three or four years ago. And uh, I contacted the engineer over there that worked on this for me, and he's going to call me tomorrow. We'll see how that works out. That's, that's, that's an option. But what I, what I got now is actually going to work because my pickup head is spring-loaded. So when this board is not oriented flat, what ends up happening is you have a high spot and you have a low spot. And so, because I have a spring-loaded pick head, I'm not going to crush any parts when I actually put them down. We'll see how that goes. Let me go ahead and show you some other things that I worked on. I keep an eye on my cameras here. Um, I have... Um, let me get over here. So, uh, you know, in my, play, my, uh, my head here, I have the pickup head, I have my USB camera, and back behind here I have the uh, solder paste dispenser. And... Those need to get offsets set so that when I go to an X for the solder paste, I end up at the right spot. And when I go to the X, Y, in the, uh, with the camera head, I go to the right spot. And same with the, the uh, pickup head. Well, I've been, walking, I've been looking through how Open P and P actually solves their alignment problem. And they have some other tricks that they use for that. But they, they do um, uh, uh, um, uh, machine vision. Uh, use an open CV. And so most of these systems that most of these pick and place machines are all um, driven by um, by using machine vision, computer vision. And they have an up facing camera. So I'll go ahead and show you this up facing camera that I put together. You can kind of see it here. I made it out of a couple pieces of of um, 3D printed um, material. And I got an old USB camera and I pulled the guts out. And it has a, it's a manual focus. So I was able to tweak the focus out so it's really a close focus. And I'll go ahead and show you the alignment procedure. The first thing I end up doing is you can see that I did have a crosshair in there. I used some 30 gauge wire and glued it into the cross. And what I end up doing is I place the, the uh, camera itself over the cross and I record the X and Y position there. And then what I want to do is to, while I'm looking at the bottom camera, I move the, the uh, solder paste tip over to that same cross. And I set its position to what the camera told me it was. And then I do the same thing for the place head. So I'll kind of just give you a brief guide for that. Here is the up-facing camera. That turns out that particular camera is, you know, super low resolution. This is something that I had sitting around. But I'll go ahead and move over there and kind of show you that. Now we're looking at the bottom camera now. This is the one you want to look at. No, you're looking at the, this, this. I'm getting confused here. You want to look at this one. This is the view from above. Okay. So what I end up doing is I end up... Uh, kind of placing this this camera this camera's crosshair if I can get this to have the right focus here here we go so you kind of work your way over and get that crosshair in the center and then you record the X and Y position and then what you end up doing after that is you move the the um, the solder uh, dispenser tip and look up from the bottom which is what you're seeing in the bottom camera. This, so this camera is the bottom facing camera and what you're seeing is the up facing view of my USB camera. So we'll go ahead and move over there. <clears throat> we'll move over to the solder dispenser. If I can get over there. Okay, so there's the... You can kind of see it up here. Let me move down here. Okay, you kind of see it there? Now, it's out of focus um, because the, this particular camera, when, you, when you're doing this close focus, the uh, focal point is really, um, really quite tight. Um, 
So you just you just kind of move it around until you get that in the center. And I can move it up and down, but I'm not going to. But you kind of get the idea. It'll, it'll, it does get in focus and a little bit bigger. And you can see it behind those wires. And then you set its X, Y position using... There's another uh, Linux CNC uh, command called uh, G10L20. And it's, it's another coordinate setting system. So I set the X, Y for the coordinate system for the, the solder paste dispenser tip. And then I also set it for the pick place, uh, which is on G56. So that got all that strained out and actually getting really good results now. I'll go ahead and show you, like we'll do a mock run here. I'm just checking some other stuff here. I'm running out of batteries. I'm running out of time. <laughs> um, okay, we'll go ahead and go back up here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and show you what the solder paste dispensing looks like. Um, I know you can't really see it on this other camera, but you can kind of look at the speed. That's what's important. But you, you kind of can see that the, the uh, Z-axis is moving up and down. They're moving over the pins. So we'll go ahead and pretend like we're placing the 220, resist, 220 ohm resistors down here. So we'll do... Um, we're we're going to solder these parts. So what it's doing now is it's moving over to the location of all the pads for the for those resistors. It's also the relay that's connected up to the second parallel port on my PC is running over to my solder paste dispenser, which is a timed relay connected up to an air compressor. Now I'm not doing it now, but when we do get it, it'll be really noisy in here because we're gonna have the vacuum pump running, the compressor running, all these things running. It's gonna be quite, quite impressive. Well, we, we hope it's going to be impressive. Okay, so that put down the solder paste for about 10, part, 10 pads. Now, to place those parts, I can go ahead and place them now. But what's going to happen is the way that this runs is uh, you put your, your part tape in and pull the plastic cover off. And you, you zero X, Y, and Z to part zero in your tape. And then the pickup head will come over set the axis, set the rotational to zero, go down, turn on the vacuum pump, pull the part out of the tape, and while it'll pull up to a certain point, pull it all the way out of the tape, and then it'll go the rest of the tape, the rest of the Z distance, and rotate the part at the same time, then move over, put the part down, come back up, and it'll move over to the next location in the tape, and that's how it does that. So we'll go ahead and see that running as well. I'm going to go ahead and place those 220 resistors now. So it's going down to part number zero, and you can kind of see the rotation of the head. As it's going down, it sets A, picks up the part. On the way back up, it rotates it to the location on the board at the right location, as well as the right angle. And you can see the, the gas line on um, my hollow core stepper motor is actually working pretty well. So there you go, it put down five parts, uh, and I don't know how long it took, not very long. Uh, let's, let's put down some more parts. We'll put down the 10K resistors, and then I'll kind of summarize up here. So we'll go ahead and solder those. We'll just make a run here. So here's it. It's actually putting the solder paste down for the 10K resistors, and there is 11 of them. And then we'll go ahead and place it. Okay, so you can kind of see the speed of this. It looks like it's doing it maybe about every five seconds. It's able to put down two little globs of solder. I could probably make this a little faster by not going up so much on the uh, on the Z axis because I'm only putting the solder paste down. I don't need to go the full the full jog distance all the way up to the to um, Z equals 15. So now we'll go ahead and place the parts. It's done with the solder. Um, so we'll put down the, the 10Ks. It's going to come over to location zero in that tape. you got to assume that I put the 10Ks in the zero spot. But you can kind of see this is how it's working. It looks like it's maybe 10 seconds out and back. So it would do 10 parts every minute. Not very fast, but it's certainly faster than putting them on by hand. I think so. The next time you see me, I'm going to actually be putting parts down on this board. 
I did run a lot of tests in, uh, today to verify its performance. I'm not missing steps. I'm actually getting right back on the fiducials when I'm done with this. I can go ahead and show you that at the end for an alignment procedure. I have a, a very s simple way to get um, the camera aligned to the solder paste dispenser tip and the, the pickup head tip. I have rotational um, capabilities to fix the board being in the wrong orientation. Uh, the pitch and yaw for my board is actually a problem still, but the, um, for now, the spring-loaded um, place head is going to be fine for that. And um, how many more do we got? We have two more to go. We'll go ahead and let it get finished, and then we'll jump over to looking at the fiducials J, um, JP1 and JP3. All right, we'll do one last test here. We'll go do an inspection on JP1. And, of course, my camera up here is dead. There we go. Now we're on JP1. Um, when I'm screen recording, sometimes that camera stops working. There we go. So you can see we're still lined up with the fiducials. There's JP. There's the upper right-hand corner, and here's the lower left-hand corner. We're all close enough. One last thing, if I want to inspect those parts, you know, tomorrow I'll show you the inspection, but I can actually inspect them now. Um, I can inspect them after I do the soldering, paste dispensing, and then I can inspect them after I put the parts down. So I'll go ahead and run that and I'll sign off here, but I'll go ahead and run an inspection. I'll go ahead and buzz around and show you what it would, how you would actually do the inspection. So let's say that I put down the red uh, LED. So I want to just um, uh, go inspect where they go. Now they're not down on the board, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, we'll pick it up next time here as we're putting parts down from the text board. All right, let's get there. We're done for the night. All right. See you later.